Welcome back. As I've said earlier, today we have a very important interview. Now, as we all know, basic income grant, there's been so many demands over the last few years, with Namibia being labeled the, second uh, the country with the second highest inequality rates in the world. We are looking at the newly announced conditional basic income grant. And to, put the, and to take this apart for us and to make us understand how it will work, we have in studio today um, Martha Kanyama from the Minister of Gender. She's a chief ec economist. Thank you for joining us, Martha. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, Martha, can you please explain to us um, what is this new conditional basic income grant? Okay. Um, the Conditional basic income grant is basically a monthly cash grant that um, targets uh, the poor and the most vulnerable of the society, really just to assist them in, um, in meeting their basic need. Mm -hmm. So um, this program um, is part of the strategy of um, HPP2. So um, HPP2 directed the Ministry of Gender Equality, Poverty and Eradication to first start with converting the food bank and the marginalized program into a cash transfer as a first step to face in a conditional basic income grant. Mm -hmm. yes. um, so um, before we go a deeper into that, you've mentioned it will look at uh, poor people and vulnerable people. Can you please explain who are going to be these poor and vulnerable people? Okay, um, we would obviously um, um, share out the, the detailed criteria, but uh, when you talk about the poor, it's um, as per the, the, the measurements that we are using, NSA, it's based on your, your earnings. So um, we would, we would uh, give a detailed criteria to see who would then be classified as most um, uh, uh, poor and who is, uh, who is basically be, um, classified as the most uh, vulnerable. So we go into detail for every specific program, depending on what we are trying to achieve with that specific program. So what then happens to the food bank if this basic income grant, I mean, yeah, this conditional basic income grant is introduced? Okay. Uh, like I have stated, um, what we are now trying to do, uh, when we are, uh, we are going, as a country, we are going to implement the conditional basic income grant on a gradual approach. So what does that mean? We are currently starting with the existing food bank beneficiary. So we are, we are actually trans, transforming that program from the food parcel into a cash transfer. So they will be the first people on a conditional basic income grant. So instead of them getting the food parcel that they would usually get, so we are now, um, they are now going to be on a cash transfer, so they will get a monthly cash to, to really allow them to meet their basic needs. Basic needs, are yes. we, uh, uh, do you have a figure at this point? Um, please also just, uh, um, for the viewers, for the benefit of the viewers, just tell us what the, what the parcel look like in the, uh, in, uh, for the food bank, so that they just understand when you have to translate it into monetary value, what it may look like. Okay, currently um, the food parcels um, have um, the basic the basic needs uh, that's the soya and then it have the the the, the flour and then it have at some, at some time it have a tin of uh, of fish or so cooking oil salt and then we also put a bar of, uh, a soap bar there really for hygiene purposes so it it's it, it's quite have a lot of items so and um, um, when we did the estimated that the value currently it's sitting at uh, 583. Is that likely the amount of money that people may get? Okay, um, we, we, we are still working on the figures, but um, we would, uh, based on, because this, this program has to be um, implemented with the existing budget that we have. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at the food parcels and then we also look at the poverty line, what it's saying, so that we we'll see what will be the, 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 the amount that we are likely to give out. Now, um, so, but at the moment we are looking at 500. So how will it? Yeah, so you said yes, it will be work. Uh, you'll, you'll, it will be rolled out the same way as the food bank. But obviously, remember the food bank was piloted in different regions of the country. So um, how is this going to be different? Because it's not going to be a pilot, or is it still a pilot? Um, food bank pilot started in Vindu. Yes. We have already rolled out to all 14 regions. Yes. So we are not on a pilot basis anymore. The pilot started in uh, in, in Vindu, and we have done the rollout already. So what we are saying is. For us to do a gradual conditional basic income grant, we are basically just taking the existing beneficiary that we have on our database for the food bank. And then we put those people into a conditional basic income grant, meaning they are now to receive the cash. 
So what if people fell into poverty? What if, uh, say, hypothetically, you or I, I mean, in, you know, with COVID, so many people lost their jobs, people were, um, uh, people were retrenched, mm -hmm. companies closed down, and I have fallen below the poverty line, but I was not on that food bank list. What then happens to me? Yeah, no, that's a very good question. As I have indicated, we are doing a gradual. So maybe uh, let me just go further and explain when are we starting with this gradual first and foremost, and how does the future look for the conditional basic, basic income claim going in the future? So um, come April this year, 2022, so we would move all the food bank beneficiary into a cash. Mm -hmm. So however, due to financial constraint, we are not going to take up any new enrollment. This is because we are working with the existing ceiling budget that we have for the program, and this is likely to go on for the next three years, because we, as you know, we have a medium term expenditure framework, and for that whole uh, period, we have um, a, a ceiling on the program. We have a cap literally on the program. So now moving in the future, we will again, when you allow me so that we get to how the future program, uh, how the future will look like in terms of um, conditional basic income claim, I would again um, explain to you how we, we plan to, um, to um, enroll it, uh, to expand it further to other people and who are these, uh, these other people that we are talking about. So uh, just, just one important thing. Remember, a part of the, uh, the, the, the food that was given to uh, 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 food bank beneficiaries was obviously fish that was donated from some fishing companies. Yeah. So what would happen in, uh, with these in-kind donations if this is now transferred into a cash payment? Okay, as a ministry, um, this is just to go to cash, but as a ministry, we also still have a program that looks at the... Uh, um, 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 contribution from the society. So we would again um, go back to our strengthening that program so that it can take care of this in-kind donation and then we will be able to give it out to the people that are in need. How is that, how is that done? Because uh, currently, because currently, yeah. currently how, the food, how the food bank is, it's, it's, on, it's purely on government, it's on, it's on government uh, budget. Yes. Whether we got donation or we didn't get donation, the donation item can just be a portion in the parcels, but we have a standard parcel that we give out every every month. Yes. In absence of any donation. Yes, of course. So it just complement our parcels. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So obviously when now that now that we are moving from the in kind to cash, we have to strategize to see how best we then um, um, channel out any donation that we are getting. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, you said how it would be ro rolled out. So, as we know, the, the, the existing uh, social grants are paid out at post offices. They are paid out uh, even through bank uh, bank accounts. So, how will this one be paid out? Okay. Um, with the with the conditional basic income grant, so we will use the existing system that okay. we have in place. So, um, currently, we are we, we are going to just use the ex. Exactly the same system that support the paying out of old age disability grant and child grant. So if you look at that system that we're using, we have um, various mode of payment. Either you go through a commercial bank, it's up to the beneficiary. They can choose to get their money through a commercial bank, non-post uh, um, cash account, or they can actually uh, through a mobile payment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So again, this will be the same method that will be available and applicable to the food, food bank beneficiary when we now move into the conditional basic income grant. So, uh, um, so uh, are there any uh, models that we are going to benchmark this grant against to make sure it's sustain sustainable in the long run? Okay. Um, um, as a ministry or a sector in particular, we are working towards uh, strengthening the efficiency within our safety net. So we are making sure that we strengthen our targeting criteria to really just get people that are supposed to be on, uh, on those specific grants to be the one to be on those specific grants. So we, we also uh, work toward uh, mon uh, continuously monitoring and verification to see if there are improved improvement in uh, employment st status, more especially for program that the requirement is to do with uh, uh, your income. Mm -hmm. So um, um, as, as we're speaking, as a ministry, we are working toward uh, developing an integrated information management system. So that system will allow us to, to do close verification with external, external um, uh, system okay. to really verify 
on a, on a continuously basis the improvement of the status uh, mm -hmm. of the employment status of our people for the people that are on program that require the, that the criteria is issue of income if they have in, if they happen to get themselves employment then they need to go out of the specific program so we are really strengthening efficiency within the social safety net you were speaking about verification earlier so what, what uh, monitoring and verification systems do you have in place to make sure that six people in one house doesn't get, uh, um, say it's, for instance, the pensioner gets it, there's uh, an orphan in that house, and there's an unemployment mother, uh, unemployed mother in that house. What systems do you have in place to make sure that there are not this uh, um, uh, duplication in one house? Okay, uh, this is what I've just indicated that we are moving into a space of integrated information system. So basically, what that does, what that means is, we will be able to do a close verification with different clients. We will be able to see if we get your ID number or your birth certificate number. We'll be able to see if this specific person is um, getting old age. We check with the clean affair, we check with any other grants that, not just what the ministry is coordinating, but with other grants that are being implemented in the country. So this is really um, our plan to ensure that we don't also have double dipping or over targeting or somebody just getting more than while other people are not getting. So that's the space we are moving into. What, what, an interesting thing is we have, Namibia has been hit very hard by COVID-19 in the sense that people lost their lives and especially vulnerable people from the vulnerable uh, societies. Um, so uh, can you tell me, what if a mother in a house passed on that, has, that was on this grant? I, I mean, uh, the food bank uh, uh, distribution. How are you going to make sure that, that those children continue receiving it? How do people register or re-register? Okay. Um, when it comes to food bank specific, which we are now uh, 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 transforming into a, a conditional basic income grant, when it comes to how we do it, you have a main beneficiary and alternate. Mm -hmm. So this is really to take care of those issues. So if, a, if something happened to a main beneficiary, so the household have to come to us and inform us that this is what happened, and then and the household choose if the alternate, if that alternate become the recipients of the grant or not, so it's it's we coordinate it. Okay, so basically, as a community, um, as 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 a even community leaders, can they come to you and and, and explain that this family is devastated? They need uh, incentive. You've earlier said that new people will not be allowed on, but are there going to be exceptions? Yeah, temporarily they will not be allowed on, uh, but. Um, we are, we are basically saying temporarily we are not doing a massive enrollment. Yes. Yeah. That, that is because we need to live within our program budget. Uh -huh. Yeah. But then you see that uh, th th there is a movement on the program. Maybe that specific family tells you now, now we have employment, we are able to take care of ourselves. So that specific person goes out of the system and then will be, who, who, who free, they will free up a space for the next person that, 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 that need, to be, uh, need to be enrolled on the program. Um, earlier when we started, you said that uh, um, it was rolled out to, throughout the country, but yeah, I do okay. know that some towns and villages are not, uh, the pilot is, I mean, it was a pilot in the beginning, that some, some towns and villages and uh, did not benefit from the food bank. So how are you going to make sure if you are not going to take people on at the beginning now, I mean new people, how are you going to make sure, say for instance, Okahanya has not received, I'm not, hypothetically, mm -hmm. Okahanya has not received because it's so close to Ventuk and only on Chivarongo, yet we have a lot of people that need this intervention, this uh, assistance in Okahanya. How are you going to work around that? Okay, maybe also just to, um, to add more on that. Um, the food bank, Target Eben and Peri Eben. So you will find it in all um, 14 regions, yes. but in Eben and Peri Eben yes. areas. Yeah? So um, when we now talk about social safety net, um, if the specific household comes up and they, they are in need of social assistance and they are, they are not on the food bank, um, again, we have what we call child grant as well. If there's a children in that house, we then Pick, uh, take up that case and put them, depending on the assessment that comes out, 
uh, if they have met the criteria for the program, they have been taken on the child on the child clan if they are children. If there is an elderly that also happened not also just to be on the old age, we take up that case. So we also see across different programs, social uh, social protection programs that we are implementing. Where does that specific household? Where can we place that specific household so that we ensure we really um, um, assist that specific household? So it's not really just um, about conditional basic income grant, but it depends where else they can be placed within the social, within the social protection programs. Okay. Uh, just for the, for the benefit of, of the viewers, um, as I've said earlier, many people lost their jobs. So many people do not know how you can access or in which instances you can access the, the, the grants, the child, uh, children's grants. So if my husband lost a job, I lost a job, there's no income, we are basically just so lying. Are we eligible to apply for a grant? Okay, uh, when it comes to child grants, again, we have different criteria for different child, uh, for, for, for different uh, children grants. So you have the the the, the OVCs, mm -hmm. and then you have the the one on where we, you, for example, the example that you're just talking about in terms of the income. If you get less than uh, one thousand one thousand one hundred uh, income, then you can apply for for it. So yeah, so they uh, you 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 should just um, come to any of our our. our office that is near nearby you and then you inquire more information on how which which spe yes, specific grant yes, can uh, can possibly take care of your need so let's go for a break quickly and then when we come back we will delve deeper into exactly how this conditional basic income grant will be implemented and which target people will be targeted ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Yeah, welcome to another exciting edition. your flex package with Paratus today. Sign up for ultra-fast fiber with the convenience of mobile LTE. That's two products in one bundle. It's new, it's one bill, and you can stay connected in more than one location. For more information, visit paratus.africa forward slash na. So Martha, please explain to us very broadly how will this be a conditional basic income grant be implemented and also with a high rise in youth unemployment, um, how can young people benefit, young people out of a job, young people out of school? Okay, um, when it's come to the conditional basic income grant, we are going to implement on a gradual approach. So we will first have to start with the, with the existing food bank beneficiary. Uh, what we are going to do is uh, actually converting that food, uh, the food bank program from the food parcel to cash and then the, uh, to move into a, a conditional basic income grant. And uh, this will start in April 2022, this year. So um, now moving in the future, we would now um, only extend the conditional basic income grant after three years from now. Yes. The reason we are only able to do that is because we are working on a, a, a budget cap for a program. We are unable to, to, um, to go uh, above the, the budget program at this point in time due to financial difficulties. And um, now as we are going to go um, after three years, what we are going to do is uh, the conditional basic income grant would, um, will be low out to the people aged 19 to 59 that are living in poverty and are most vulnerable. Uh, the reason for this specific age category, 
uh, it's really because um, at, at, at this point in time, we have a gap within our social safety net. So if you happen to be very poor and vulnerable, um, there is no social grant that we can place you on at this point in time if you are not a child and you are not a person with disability or neither you are old age because all those have um, uh, age category, age category for, 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 for old age, age category for the child, and of course, if you are not disability, so then they, there is a gap within that social safety net. So in future, moving in the future, conditional basic income claim also um, uh, looks at addressing that uh, existing gap that we are having. Thank you very much for joining us, Martha, and for helping us flesh out these details. Okay, thank you so much.